Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some Europa Universalis 4. We're going to play as the Inca. So I've tried out the Mayans, I've tried out the Nahuatl, and now we're going to try out the Incans, and uh, we're actually going to go ahead and enable Iron Man for once, um, and go for an achievement in this run. I think that we can do it pretty quickly, actually, because um, it, it's going to be a little bit of Speed 5, Speed 4, like, colonization. I'm very excited because I'm playing on patch um, 1.11.4, which has major, major optimization stuff that was done to it, and apparently is running like three to four times faster for most people who are having that same issue that I was having. So, looking around a little bit at the Incans, um, we start off, the religion is Inti. Uh, we're gonna, the goal is to form the country of Inca, um, and what will end up happening is we get the Incan ideas. However, there is one country in this small little region here that actually starts with Incan ideas, which is Cusco. Now, Cusco is um, the country that starts with the OP leader. He's 546. He's kind of like the Aztecs. Uh, the Aztecs start with a 435, and then the nearby neighbors start with like kind of crap crap leaders around them. Um, Cusco starts with a really good leader, a really good heir. Um, everyone else has crappy leaders and stuff. We're gonna we're gonna place that country. We're gonna place Cusco, even though it's gonna be like the easy start. I don't really care. I want I want to experience the the ideas, the culture, the people. You know, whatever. We're gonna we're gonna place Cusco, and uh, he's he's pretty rad. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna turn on Iron Man mode. Let's make sure we've got our game options set properly. Um, AI bonuses are at normal. Lucky Nations is on. Okay, everything's good about that. Sounds great. Um, they did patch it. You can't add in custom nations to Iron Man games anymore. Um, thanks, DDR Jake. It happens. We're gonna call this one a Sun God, because that is the name of the achievement. So the goal, if you haven't seen it, um, let me read the achievement to you. It is a Sun God. Form Inca, westernize, and own all of South America. So first off. What's different about the Incans versus the, uh, or rather the Inti versus the Mayans and the Nahuatl? Well, we have the same type system. We have to pass five reforms before we can reform our religion. Reforming our religion is going to be what allows us to westernize if we have an adjacent western neighbor. Um, but unlike the Mayans and the, uh, the Aztecs, for instance, um, we don't lose anything when we pass reforms. Instead, what we have to do is we get to 100 authority, we pass the reform, and then we have to fight three rebel stacks, which are usually going to be about 6 to 10 in size each. And that's it. And then your authority goes back down to zero, you wait till it goes back up to 100 again, and you pass the next reform. You don't lose any land, so it actually gets easier the bigger you get. So, as I mentioned, we start off with an OP leader. We're 546, we have an heir that's a 536, and our guy is already a general, he's a 3542. Holy crap. He is really good. Now we have two um, two missions that kind of conflict with each other. We can either try to ally Wonka or we can conquer Wonka. Now, this is one of those fantastic missions that actually gives you a claim on their capital. So we're going to take that. Uh, we do want to try to form an alliance or two. Your enemies with Huila. Huila, okay. We will ally them if they are friendly. Although we want to make sure that we are the ones that actually siege them down. Now the way that you gain... Uh, authority as the NT is just from having more base tax. But also, every time you lower autonomy, you'll gain 5 authority. Every time you raise autonomy, you lose autonomy. Uh, lose authority, excuse me. And also there's random events that are going to increase or decrease it. So we want to build up to our force limit right away. Uh, we have two more infantry on the way. We'll put our guy in charge. Hopefully he doesn't die. Uh, we're going to immediately declare war on this guy. And we just need to make sure that we get in there and siege him down before this guy can get a claim or anything. So uh, we've already sent our alliance request. We uh, are waiting for a response. Let's wait one day. There we go. Uh, Ichma wants an alliance. Um, as does Pakajes. As does Charka. Okay, so we're in our alliance that we actually care about. So Charka... Let's see, who hates Kala? Okay, we'll, we'll accept the alliance with Charka. Because they're... That'll be fine. Um, Ichma is too tiny. And Ichma actually has something special. They have this thing called the Oracle of Pachacamac. Pachacamac, it's a plus 0.5 tolerance of the true faith, which is really valuable. That is lower um, unrest in every province that you own that is of your religion. And all of this land is of our religion, so it makes it really easy to lower autonomy. We're going to want to conquer him, um, so I don't think we're going to accept his alliance. Pacajes um, is most likely going to rival Charca. No, they did not. They rivaled, they rivaled Kala, and they rivaled Kalchqui. Okay, so good. We can actually accept both alliances. I was thinking we'd only be able to do one of these two. 
They, they usually seem to want to fight each other. Now, before we declare war, we're going to set our own rival, if, if we can. We're going to rival Wonka. And we're going to rival Kala. Uh, we're going to insult Wonka. Get our power projection up just a tiny bit. Um, <clears throat> we need to appoint our merchants, get them working. We'll go ahead and collect from trade here. And that is the only node that we know of, so we can't do anything else. Okay, a couple alliances are being formed. Wonka is allied with up there. Okay, that's fine. Hopefully this guy, Huila, will distract him. And now as soon as we can, we will declare our war on Wonka. At the same time, I think we'll start fabricating a claim on Makaya. And we are going to employ a few tricks in this, uh, this campaign to try to speed it up a little bit. Alright, after years of struggles, and having been dangerously close to total defeat by the Chancas in 1438, the, the Kingdom of Cusco has now risen to a greater position than it has ever been previously. Having saved the kingdom, the young king Pachacuti went on to conquer the Chanca Kingdom itself shortly afterwards, a state that for long times has exacted tribute not only from Cusco but from many other states in the Andean world since the fall of the old Wari Empire. Apart from marking Pachacuti as the greatest leader of the Cusco Kingdom to date, the fall of the Chancas have given us access to their great treasury, a huge collection of gifts from neighbors and tributaries. This is exactly the kind of capital needed to buy the services necessary to reform and expand our kingdom. At this point, nobody knows Pachacuti's plans. I do. Uh, but what, we, what is certain is that he, will, uh, that he has the means to steer Cusco in whichever direction he could wish. Oh, wow, look at that massive pile of tribute. 8.24 ducats. All right. We're going to try something a little bit different. Um, in, my, in my Mayan campaign and the Aztec campaign, I focused on military. And I think that that's good. But you run into this thing where after you get to Tech 2, the value of Tech 3 is minor compared to Tech 2. The value of Tech 4 is significant because you get your tactics bonus. But by then, you've already won. So I don't think we really need to rush Tech 2. Um, I think it'll come fast enough. And we've also got a really good leader to kind of get us, get us through there. We're actually going to focus on administrative. And we're going to try to rush... Um, to Tech 4 Administrative, so we get our first idea group. And then we're going to sink all of our points into uh, Exploration. So, we're going to focus on Administrative. It's going to slow down our military a little bit. We can't afford a lead, uh, an advisor. Although, may maybe we could. National Manpower Modifier guy, that'd be kind of cool. Diplomatic Reputation guy, that guy could be really good. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It all depends. Let's wait until December the 13th. I'm going to play in Speed 3. Please don't make any more allies, Wonka. Willy Wonka. Uh, the Lord of Huila. Uh, we're going to decline all royal marriages because all alliances are temporary. Uh, Lord of Pakaha. Nope. Uh, priests inciting unrest in Abenke. The priests of a minor Huaca god in Abenke have been trying to inflame opinions against our rule by saying that we are slowly attempting to increase the authority of Inti. Well, obviously, we are we're trying to rapidly increase the authority of Inti. They're right. Uh, we're marginalizing that of all the Huaca gods. Luckily, most of our subjects know better than to listen to these wild accusations, but one of our Abakane's tribes supports the priests and have now demanded that we give them guarantees for their safety, for the safety of their gods and their people. The time has come for these people to move on as Mitmak. So we gain five authority. We lose base tax in Abenke and have the base tax move to this province. So it's saying base tax is going to travel from our grain province to our wool province, which would actually be totally fine um, with me. Oh, we can fight seven nationalists and gain ten authority. Guaranteed, but then the base tax doesn't move. So, do we want to have to face a 25% chance at five or a 100% chance at seven? Well, I feel like if we're the defender, and we wait until we have these uh, these extra troops ready, that we could totally handle this rebellion and just get an early bump to our authority. That could be good. So let's hold off for just a moment. This is delaying my war, but I think it's well worth it for, ten, for 10 authority. That's a tenth of a, of a reform. We need 500 authority total to pass all of our reforms. So on the 18th, uh, we are going to decline everything. Wonka is militarizing, probably because they see me militarizing. Uh, let's do that. Now, unfortunately, they do get a morale bonus because they are annoying. So they have two. Uh, are, they're fighting a 1-1. One, one. We've got a 3-5. They get a crossing penalty. I think we're going to be just fine. I love being able to wait on events. 
That is a rather unfortunate little loss of manpower, but for 10 authority, we'll take it. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and wait now, I think, until at least March. Wonka has to do a military alliance with Kala. Okay. That's fine. That means that if I can, uh, depending on who you guys have rivaled, who would you uh, accept a call to arms from? All three would join against him. All three would join against him. Perfect. So we can actually attack both of our rivals at once. Cool. This would bring in Kala and the other guy. This would bring in Kalchakui, who we don't actually care about. Unless... Yeah, we could actually, like, vassalize that guy. He's really far away, but... No, I think I'm going to focus on... Just getting these guys that are right next to each other for right now. Okay, it's March. We've got some more morale. I think we're good to go. Um, do we want to do any kind of... Co-belligerence? Wonka. Kalchikui. They're already going to be both involved. If we declare on Wonka... The only other person you'd be able to bring in is Kalchikui. And I'm pretty positive that these two can beat these two. So... Do you have other allies? You, you would bring in Ichma. Which would be perfect. I want that. Okay, so we're going to make this guy into co-belligerent, so he brings in Ichma. And we're not going to involve this guy, because I want to. I just want to dominate this area for now. And uh, we'll make the war goal the, the province that's adjacent to us, and we'll get started. Assuming you haven't fabricated claims on him or on him, I should be able to just have all, all of it transferred to me, which would be great. Let's make sure that Ichma gets called in. Uh, hold on, hold on now. Did I did I look at the wrong ally? I did. Crap! I looked at this guy. I thought that he was going to bring in this guy. Ah, shoot, shoot, shoot. So you're going to bring in Chimu Kito Wonka. Okay, well that's maybe not the best. Let's hold off for a second, let him arrive, and let's let him actually lead the combat. Are they going to honor the call, is the real question. Are you going to help me engage? No, you're not? Hmm. Chimu have honored their alliance. Yep, so now we're going to fight people that we don't necessarily need to, but it's okay, it's okay. Alright, yes. Move out of my... Move out of that land, please. A lot of this land is mountainous, so you want to be the defender if at all possible. Um, or, you know, let your allies do the fighting. There's always that. So we'll move into his capital. This guy's unfortunately fighting natives. <laughs> Um, and I think that these guys can be counted on to come and kill these armies. Alright, so I really would have preferred for all these other guys to not be in this war. That was a bit of a strategic mistake there. It's okay though, don't worry. Have no fear. Our allies are expendable. They'll do their job. Cusco, Naval of the World. One of, our first, one of the first things that Pachacuti's agenda is... One of the first things on his agenda is reshaping Cusco. While our capital has served its purpose over the years, it is in many ways no more than a rural village, often flooded by nearby rivers. Such a city is no longer fitting for a kingdom with ambitions such as ours. By creating a small model version of the city, Pachacuti has drawn up plans for an entire redesign, necessitating the complete evacuation of the city for the duration of the project. While the manpower and material needed for this project are readily available inside our new borders, Mobilizing the various chiefs under our control entails a generous use of gifts and feasts. That is, however, a price we will have to pay for our new capital. Okay, uh, yes, absolutely. We're gonna do it. Feel, feel free to attack me in the mountains of the Wargle. I, I will gladly defend against you. Wonka is gonna retreat pretty far away. Relative strength of the Alliance is still in our favor, despite the fact that I called in the wrong people. Oops. And assuming you two don't get claims, you'll transfer occupation of this guy. Of course, they might still end up with claims. Um, I think we want to help out with this fight if we can get there in time. July 10th. We can get there in time, yes. And we have our excellent leader, 
in mountains. Minus three penalty for them. We just rolled a nine plus a three. Wow. Okay. Well, we barely lost any troops ourselves. Our guy does have siege value. Let's let's have him come back to the war goal. We could chase those armies down, but at this point, I feel like all of the enemies have been routed up in that direction, so there's going to be like 20,000 men up there. Maybe 15,000. Yeah, 14-6. So we'll just kind of focus on the war goal. These guys are doing a good job sieging down here. Their flags are very easy to get mixed up, in my opinion. So, what are the tricks that we're going to Im apply in this campaign? Well, first off, there's, there's two. Um, one is that I've discovered a way that we can max out authority very quickly um, by kind of abusing the way that vassals work and lowering autonomy works. And then the other is that we're gonna we're gonna kinda colonize a little bit faster than you should be able to. The world can sometimes be an unforgiving place, and fate may turn in surprising ways. Luckily we have the Huwaka gods of our people to help us interpret what the future holds. Should the future be too hard for the Huwakas to penetrate, there are other oracles in the Andes, but they require a worthy gift before sharing their visions. Pachacuti Hanan has been beset by ample doubts recently, and it is perhaps time to consult the auguries. Okay, if we pay ducats, there's a 25% chance of a favorable outcome. Or, best not to dwell on the future. Yeah, I don't like the idea of a 75% chance of a conflicted answer. Blech. No way. I don't even know what a conflicted answer is, but I don't want it. Please don't fabricate claims on, on him. You can't fabricate on the capital, but I'm worried that both of them might fabricate a claim on. They may have started it at the very beginning, because I did hold off on my, my war declaration for like, what, three months, four months? Okay, we got the capital. Our goal in this is probably going to be, uh, for sure, the full annexation of Wonka. And possibly the full annexation of Kala. Probably not the full annexation of anybody else. May maybe. One, two, three, four, five. That is really juicy. That might work out spectacularly. We'll see. We shall see. I think we might go for something crazy. Why the full annexation, you say? Or you ask? I'll show you. I'll tell you soon. The problem is that because we uh, we don't have claims on everything, full annexation is going to be uh, it's going to be 45 or 50 diplo per province. So it's going to be a lot of diplo points. We'll take whatever we can get our hands on. Let's just leave it at that. All right, we moved our army here just so our siege value can apply to this as well. And we're just trying to get this guy. That's his army. Uh, now he has no territory, so he, his army is probably ignorable. It'll probably have to disband. I don't think he can afford it with no, no income. So we'll ignore it for now. And we're going to move on down here to another province. Don't have to worry about um, blockades. Which is nice. That's something I had to get used to at first. But yeah, we're going to start working on sieging down Chimu. If this gets close, I might double back and actually fight him. But um, I imagine Wonka's going to have some, some financial issues soon. Wonka has 26 ducats in the bank. But, we'll see. We shall just see. For now, though, I'm going to, to take a short break here. I know I made a mistake in the beginning, but it might work out in, the fa in our favor. We'll see. But um, I'm going to take a break. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, and then, again, since this is the first episode in a new series, if you want to help show your support by clicking the like button or leaving a comment or any of those things, it does help out quite a bit. So, um, this will be the first and last time you hear me say that on this series. But uh, take it to heart. So, thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.